I wanted so bad to like this. I wanted to like this so bad. But they stay ready to slap that based on a true story sticker on the front of some shit. And we're just supposed to eat it up. Welcome back to my channel. It's Tyra here with another struggle review here to discuss The Conjuring The Devil Made Me Do It. Now this is a 2021 release. It is available in theaters and it's also available on HBO Max. Now this is the third movie in this Conjuring-esque franchise and to me it's the weakest. Now these particular possession movies like this make me long for my favorite possessions movie which is The Exorcist and The Exorcist 3. Everything below that just can fall by the wayside. Before I get into what I thought about this film, what I didn't like about this film, and more that I didn't like about this film, I need you guys to drop down and subscribe to my channel and like this video. I'm gonna give you guys a moment to do that and then we're gonna come back and discuss all things dry. It was dry, y'all. Jump scares, dry. Aesthetically, dry. Lorraine and John, just dry. Mm-mm. subscribe to see more of me let's get into this movie but before we get over there let's talk about James Wan for a second now James Wan I don't believe he directed this film I think he produced and wrote on this film but for him in particular with me he's always been a one and done director for me I always like the beginning of his franchise and you know that first film he directs and writes and then the later on you know when we get into other universes you know Annabelle and the nun that's when I started not to like certain things so much much so for me my favorite things from him will you know always be you know the dead silence that first insidious um that first saw film of course and of course the first conjuring now when i first saw the first conjuring with me loving possession films oh my goodness this is so good it's you know very reminiscent of an amityville horror we have gotten so many possession films over the years like it really takes a lot to get you invested in the possession in those characters and what's going on and that first conjuring film did a very good job of doing that and them introducing you know john and lorraine also added more to the film and i was hoping unlike you know with the second film that wasn't bad but you know it's, it's not my favorite I was hoping that with the third film with us getting you know so much from the conjuring and the universe and all the insidious the nun and like we would take this moment to kind of take it up a notch with Lorraine and John and kind of give us something different than we haven't seen before yeah we didn't get that here so getting into this film which is two hours long I don't think it needed to be two hours long I think we could have trimmed a little bit off of there but you know okay <laughs> But we immediately like waste no time jumping into this family. We get back into, you know, the whole house aesthetic that they love so much. Lorraine and John coming to help, you know, with the possession. Now, unlike that first film that I love so much, we do not invest any real time into these characters so that when things start to happen, we don't really care. <laughs> but we get into this little boy, David, who, you know, we're trying to, you know, get the demon out of and he's possessed. And immediately we don't see anything quite wrong with him. But it's being said that something, you know, is haunting him. He's been going through some things at which we, you know, we wait for, we're waiting on the Reverend and we get that frame. I, I kind of feel away sometimes about, you know, callbacks to great films or whatever. Like when they did that whole exorcist thing with the, I was like, okay all cute but yeah we immediately jump into you know it just like fades to black and we jump into like super possession and you know there's you know all these scratching like almost like werewolf like clawing on the walls and the little boy who was just so timid is you know really really possessed and <laughs> there's you know his body is contorting and veins and you know i'll stop your heart old man like it's it's just so intense out of nowhere and I didn't care 
I did not care with all the possession movies that I have seen like it really takes a lot for me to get into there and for me to get into there I really wanted to fear for that little boy oh my god little precious is being possessed but we literally got five minutes with him now it was you know an epic way I guess to start off the film but it also was a letdown because I was under the impression since we started off so epic and I'll stomp your heart and, you know, come out of him and get into me and, you know, all of this, you know, energy being given, we can only go up from here. We didn't go up from here. Now it's at this part that we get into the real character we're here for, Artie. Uh, the little boy's sister's girlfriend who is, you know, come out of him and get into me, like take me on. I loved how he was, you know, like instantly possessed and nobody noticed except for John who's like having a heart attack type situation on the floor and he can't breathe and he's hospitalized. So we go through like a good chunk of the movie with him kind of slowly being possessed and kind of transforming and seeing, you know, the supernatural things occur and no one else notices. I'm like, <laughs> But we see him, uh, you know, momentarily possessed. And this is when this story takes all kind of liberties and doesn't quite know what it wants to be, especially with our main, you know, supernatural villain-esque lady. I was like, what? So we go from, you know, a simple possession story and Lorraine and John being, you know, their normal selves trying to cast out these, the power of Christ compels you, all that good stuff. And then we jump straight into, you know, Artie being a murderer and us trying to, you know, prove his innocence and Lorraine and John kind of being his last hope and saying, you know, this wasn't just some act of violence. He was actually possessed and killed, you know, the most raunchy, drunk, bothersome man. I was like, he looked really rapey. Their little friend that he killed in the beginning, I was like, uh. <laughs> I don't know. His whole presence just bothered me. I was like is he trying to do something to her what's, what's going on but they don't really invest a lot of time in Artie and getting us to you know really like him as a character it's you know set up more so through dialogue through the girlfriend and go you know oh Artie's not that and you know in the beginning we get you know when are you gonna marry my sister and Artie you know is trying to move away and all these different things and it's just really set up to make him look like you know a super nice guy but it wasn't just enough for me to care when he actually got possessed and then when it turned into him being possessed momentarily that was a whole different thing but it's at that point that we get off into you know Lorraine and John being themselves and we're going to investigate and we're going to try and when all hope is lost we're always going to be there which is always my problem within their universe because when they have things like really intense things that happen to them as a couple and you know their life is in jeopardy and it's Lorraine, Lorraine, John, oh and it's just so dramatic and I'm like what would y'all think y'all doing like catching puppies? It, it always kills me with these when you know things are like shit's hitting the fan and like oh, I could lose my wife, I could lose my husband at any moment. Yes! What the hell y'all think y'all doing? But once we get into Lorraine and John, you know, taking over and we're going to figure out what's going on and we're going to save Artie, you know, who's incarcerated now and being taunted by this entity. We're going to get into her. This is when we get into jump scares. Now, we had a few in the beginning and we had a few all over the place. None of them were effective. That is like my pet peeve with horror movies like... I was just waiting for at least one to hit because I can remember so vividly with that first one, those jump scares. And I love that first one. I'm yes, I am gonna be championing for the first one because it really spoke to less being more. That first film with that family, we spent a lot of time with the family. Everything was really subtle, you know, things happening, things, you know, flipping over. And when we finally get to, did get to see, you know, the demonic presence that was, you know, haunting the family in the house, it was so epic and we didn't have to see much. Here we see so much <laughs> of this woman, this black magic. It like, it's, it's so much here. And I just felt like it ruined it for me. Like, I didn't want to see her that much. Like how we kind of got that, that peep. Uh, and the second one into the nun and we got that glimpse of her and it was just, you know kind of kind of epic and then we get to you know the nun story and all of that and we just see so much of her we don't need to it's scarier when we when we don't get to see it I don't want to see old girl in her catholic school girl uniform I don't want to see her that much <laughs> but once we get into that part 
we spend so much time with Lorraine and John just proving themselves to other people just to, you know, exist and be who they want to be. And, you know, them trying to get help with this investigation, them trying to, you know, talk to policemen, get a lawyer. And it's, you know, oh, I don't believe in the supernatural. I, I only, you know, we're looking for, you know, real entities. I, I need, you know, some proof that these things exist. Like it was so much of them, you know, trying to prove themselves. I was like, we're spending a lot of time with this with a lot of extra characters we don't need. No. But, you know, once we leave, you know, things kind of happening for convenience, like, oh, yeah, we need this, you know, investigation here so we can help Artie and, you know, compare these cases and see there is a possession happening. But that was just used sort of as an excuse to put Lorraine's life in jeopardy with the whole, you know, going over the cliff type situation. Like, eh. The whole with them, their life being in danger, like it's kind of spent with me now because we know deep down, like nothing's gonna really happen to them. So yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> But that's when we get into more liberties being taken. Not only is this not, you know, it goes from a possession movie to it being momentary possessions to it being, you know, this entity trying to sacrifice people to fulfill you know this demon to this black magic happening to there being a curse and her placing curses on people and we need to figure out you know who this is and you know break her altar before she completes the curse and fulfills the prophecy type situation what why did we need all of that we did not need all of that like uh but not only do we have all of this going on, but we also have like a love story type situation happening where they are trying to pit Artie and his girlfriend's relationship against Lorraine and John's relationship. And there's this sense of, you know, the power of love can conquer all type thing going on. Who wrote that? <laughs> But you have, you know, little flashbacks and little tidbits of, you know, Lorraine and them meeting in the past, which I think might make for a different kind of story if we got to, you know, go back and see, you know, how they met and how they actually got into, oh, I see, you know, visions and I can communicate with, you know, the dead and okay, yeah, well, I cast out demons. How did y'all get there? Th that could be interesting to see, but we get into that flashback and this love conquers all and and we get into the same thing with Artie and his girlfriend, but it's not as effective because we're not really invested in them. So there's just, you know, some whiny girlfriend worried about her boyfriend who's in prison and, you know, he's thinking of committing suicide. S word. <laughs> but we have, um, you know, the little brother, that entity there and him just kind of, I know what you're going through, you know, with this little glasses. I know it, bub. I feel your pain. Like we, we have just those things there going on. And then we get into a side plot with, you know, them investigating a little bit more and we need to figure out, you know, more about this artifact that we found artifact, <laughs> this, you know, booty bop that we found underneath the house <laughs> and, you know, find people who know more about that. And then that's when we get into this old man, creepy character. I love when he, um, you know, invites them in and he go down, he goes down to the room. He's like, yeah, I need to uh, show y'all something. And Lorraine is like, I don't want to go in there. And I'm like, why? Because he got a whole keepsake of things locked away just like y'all have in your house? Oh, you don't want to go in there? Okay, whatever. <laughs> but we get into, you know, sacrifices and all these things and just a lot of moments. We get so many moments with Lorraine and John and and a lot of... Let me get, shit my chest. We get a lot of that and a lot of panting and a lot of zooming and a lot of hands reaching around and things to create eerie feelings that just don't work and are not effective. And then we get into Lorraine, you know, trying to connect with this entity and wanting to go and touch the dead body. And we get more of this fleshy, wet, possessed, naked and bomb big person. Who wrote that? No. So with all of that, we are left with Artie, you know, still being in prison and, you know, entities and things, you know, following him that are not effective and no one believing you know that did you see it it was right there like yeah yeah we can see that and then we have you know John and Lorraine on the outside trying to help him and you know revisiting all these things and they also have a lot of scares that aren't effective and they also have a lot of moments where 
their life is being put in jeopardy and it just holds no weight so once we get into you know the boobity bop <laughs> being left at their home and them now being cursed and oh we have to reach this in time and you see that uh this person is trying to possess john and get him to kill lorraine <sighs> I did really like for a moment because I was like, oh, that's different because that's never that's never happened. When we have Lorraine and she uh, touches, you know, she's searching and she actually communicates with the woman. And, you know, she's trying to, you know, figure out where her altar is and she's, you know, talking to her and she talks back to her. I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, is this going to be a thing? This is what we're going to be doing? No, they did it one time and then they never do it again. Gave us something nice and snatched it right back. Don't do that. <laughs> so by the time we get to, you know the ending and i guess we're supposed to be kind of on pins and needle because john has his whole health thing going on and yeah those pills yeah i forgot those <laughs> yeah whatever <laughs> and we have Artie, you know who can you know off himself at any moment or kill someone at any moment as well as john if he's you know promptly possessed by this woman who's trying to meet this quota to fulfill this demon okay and then um we get to the end of them trying to figure out where her altar is. So many things were just so convenient here and didn't really flow well for me. It just, it was just too much going on. Like, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Keep the story at a natural pace. And don't show us old lady and her Catholic thing get up too often. We saw her so much and... There was so much darkness around this film. I did not like the lighting with this film. It was either really, really bright sunshine or it was just really dark. And I didn't know what purpose that was serving. But once we get into, you know, oh, Lorraine, you know, they tried to kind of do the X-Files. Not the X-Files. What's that? The Silence of the Lamb type situation. Like, oh, Lorraine's at the house. Oh, this is the water. And they're connecting the dots. And, you know, Lorraine is in danger. And he's trying to rush to save her. I just... I just didn't care the ending for me like totally flopped this was not my favorite film at all like throughout but the ending it was just like did you even try y'all was just trying to wrap it up oh uh, but we get into you know the man this ex priest with all you know the spooky art little things in his house he's the lady's father why Mm. <laughs> and we get into you know her coming in killing him and you know following Lorraine and we have these images and you don't know what's real and what's and whew, these type of things going on like they just made a whole gumbo pot of fuckery black magic tropes and sprinkle some of that on there a couple of blood a couple of crucifixes a little darkness a little dust a little cobwebs boom y'all scared no we're not don't do this <laughs> <laughs> don't do this so by the time john gets there to um you know rescue her and he's possessed and we have you know Artie who's super possessed in this you know this jail and you know he's levitating and up and contorting and uh, and you have that with lorraine going you know remember me it's me and you have his girlfriend it's me and our love conquers all and i got your pill in my heart necklace yeah i don't care <laughs> I absolutely do not care. This um, was definitely a one-time watch for me. Not only do we have that there, but we end with, because you know they got to sprinkle in that based on, like we got to fit that based on the true story in there somewhere. So we have Ari here, who's, you know, no longer possessed and comes down. And then we have the demon coming forth that looks like the same woman who, oh, he's, like everything was just riding itself at this moment like oh now the demon comes back okay well yeah it's not leaving unless it leaves with the soul you promised the soul now it has to take you and she contorts and it takes her like what <laughs> but uh you know or you know lorraine conveniently making her way and you know it's me in front of the altar and he you know breaks her altar which is what was needed to break the curse because what party time why because i gotta a lot of shit here was because i gotta like shut up <laughs> so when we end off with you know Artie and his girlfriend walking off to the sunset him getting you know five years for manslaughter and they're married and we got the whole gazebo because you know we sprinkled in some love 
we sprinkled in some love. You remember my gazebo? Oh my God. Yes. And then we just end off with um, like, oh, don't forget this is based on the true story. Let's play some actual tapes from that moment and, you know, throw in some actual pictures. Yeah, I didn't care. I did not care. I did not care for this film very much. Um, like I said, this was a one-time watch. This is not something I will revisit. I probably wouldn't revisit the second one either. That first one, that is something I will go back to watch. I do feel like it was very masterpiece-ish-ish -ish and offered me something different. Unlike here, we got the same things. I do see that they kind of tried to reimagine a couple of things from the first film that just did not work here. Uh, nothing was subtle here. None of the jump scares were effective. I didn't care for the story. John and Lorraine and they will they or won't they lose each other. I wasn't invested. I didn't care. Uh, didn't care for any of the characters in the movie. We didn't spend a lot of time with them. I like how the little, the little boys, I like how their parents just conveniently disappeared and we didn't see them anymore. Um, yeah. I, um, but yeah, you guys, that was my review of The Devil Made Me Do It, The Conjuring. Um. Uh, if you have not seen this and you'd like to go watch it, go ahead. You know, don't expect too much because it's just not here. Um, <laughs> please drop down and tell me what you guys thought about the film. Of course, if you like this video, tell me that. If you disagree and you felt like, girl, this movie was bomb, drop down and tell me that too. I love a good in them comments. Uh, but I'll see you guys next time for my next review. Bye. <laughs>